And everybody should know that's how love goes. It's good for the soul. Oh, I got a long way to go, but it won't stop the pain. No, no. That's the kind of thing that keeps me coming. Covered everything. You remember the pin number for the store's bank account, right? Yeah, I got it right up here. You should call Terry and have her change it once I'm gone. I left the number for the uh, locksmith on my on your desk. So give him a call so he can rekey the locks for you. <laughs> What's the matter? Don't think you can handle being big dog? You're gonna be a tough act to follow. Uh, well. But I'll be okay. All I have to do is remember everything you taught me. Good. <sighs> At least you'll get to spend more time with Jeremiah. No doubt, no doubt. <laughs> I guess my days of uh, getting home in time to watch my son fall asleep are pretty much over, huh? Hey, you know what? Let me have those keys back. You go see your son and tell him a bedtime story about how his mother got a big promotion. Are you sure you don't mind? I'm positive. It'll give me one last chance to lock up. I'll bring the keys by afterwards. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for meeting me so late. Oh, well, anything to accommodate my best customer. <laughs> Come on, Sue. Chadwick. Yeah. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to be doing business with you anymore. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you dissatisfied with your service? No, not at all. It's just I've reviewed the new bids, and Ultimate Towing has you beat. They're offering twice the number of available trucks, more on duty mechanics, and a substantial corporate discount. Ultimate Towing. Uh, Look, Stu, now we have been doing business for almost 10 years now. I'm sorry, but I've got to do what's best for the bottom line. gotten past all the formality. It's Bob. Well, isn't it a little late for you to be paying us a visit? Ray and Lawrence asked for a meeting. Oh, well, let me guess. You're prosecuting one of our clients, and Ray wanted to remind you that the newest partner at the firm, me, just beat you in court and wouldn't mind doing it again. Hmm. <laughs> well, that's close. Ray and Lawrence just offered me partnership. You have to learn to hide your emotions a little better there, Terry. And that look on your face, it... It's pretty clear that you're out of the loop on this one. <laughs> T. 
to the best takeout you've ever ordered. To new beginnings. You know, it still feels like I'm supposed to be at the store early tomorrow. Well, look at it this way. J&H's loss is Groove Theory's gain. You gonna be the best night manager they ever had? Thank you for supporting me. I know you didn't want me to leave the store. Yeah, well, you just make sure that every woman at that club knows you are married. <laughs> Babe, we practically live at that club. Everybody that goes there knows we're married. Yeah, I know, I know. And Dave's been trying to get you to work there forever. And it's cool if you have to leave when you find something better. But you still better watch out for those women. Hear me? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm just going to be doing my job. Nobody got hurt. Now that's the important thing, right? Maybe it's not as bad as it looks. That's the thing. Okay. Anybody, Terry Joseph? Right here. Any uh, electrical problems with the store? Faulty wiring, anything like that? Officer. Detective. I'm... Oh. Whatever. This store has been in my family for over 25 years. So you're gonna have to muster up something akin to manners, and you want cooperation from us. Detective Connor, Arson Investigation Unit, Mr. Mitchell. The electricians were just here. They said everything was cool. You are? I'm Lynn Van Adams, the store's manager. Lynn is my husband. Our number's on the bottom. All right. Excuse me, sir. I'll be in touch. You're an asshole. Big asshole. Shy away. I, I got to call Mr. Lester. Oh, no, hell no. The last thing we need is Hardy left up in our hair. Blaming the Joseph woman for losing what used to be his. No, let him stay his ass in Mississippi. Hey, hey. Well, I'm, I'm sorry about this, you guys, but uh, I got in a meeting with my accountant in 30 minutes. Hey. Yeah, I need to go. Yeah, keep taking notes. Yes, sir. I'm not just going to stand. Lem, where are you going? Wait till it's safe. I need to get inside my store. No, sir. I need to go in my store. I need you back behind that line, sir. You don't understand. Back. I am responsible for everything back. in this store. Back. vote that I don't know about? If we are, I don't know about it either. Where'd you pick that up? Bob Wayne. I saw him leave your office last night, and he mentioned to... Uh, never mind. He was probably just yanking my chain. Well, yes and no. Lawrence and I did talk to him about joining us. Oh. Okay. I, I just thought that all of the partners would have been approached before a potential partner was courted. Normally, yes. But Bob just left the federal prosecutor's office, and with his credentials, he'll be snagged up quickly. So Lawrence and I jumped on a meeting quick. Oh. Well, too quickly to pick up the phone and ask my opinion? Check the articles of incorporation, Terry. As managing partner, I don't have to ask your opinion on anything. I do it as a courtesy 
because I want to run my business as a democracy, not because I have to. I see. I guess I'm clear on how things work here now. Good. Because Bob would be a good get for this firm. He's bright, accomplished. Uh, he won 86% of his cases. But none of that means he would fit in at Lauren Freeman. Clearly, he is not the community service type. Lawrence even described him as ruthless. <laughs> he said the same thing about you a few months ago. But we brought you on anyway, and look what you've done for this firm. Now, if Bob's interested, we'd be stupid not to take a chance on him, too. We'll know by close of business today if he's interested. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. Yo, Keisha! What do you want, Brandon? Nobody's talking to you. Look, why do you keep coming past my house with this buster? Because with an ass like yours, I mean, you can't have a real man. You better shut up. I've already got a real man. All right, just remember that I gave you a chance. So you get old and everything, your stuff starts sagging. I ain't gonna watch you. Why don't you come out here and say that? Everybody in the neighborhood knew Brandon's mother never let him outside the gate. Yeah, my man will kick your butt any day of the week. He will. He will if I ask him to. Please don't ask me to. Saved by the Yale. I know where you get off the bus. I'm gonna be waiting there Tuesday after school. Oh, right. Tuesdays are the one day your mother lets you stay out and play for a little while. Brandon, you hear me calling you? Your ass is mine, punk. Yeah, whatever. I hate sticking up for girls. Now I know how wars get started. Terry, your sister's on one. Hello? T, it's me. The police just called and asked Lem to come down for questioning. Why didn't he call me? He said there was nothing to worry about. I'll be right there. Thank you. We've got a problem, Chief. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, Nelson just blew a tire on the loop. Uh, he'll be down for at least a couple hours. Yeah, well, he has a spare, doesn't he? Oh, bad jack on that truck. But why in the hell didn't we replace it, Al? I put a purchase request in a week ago. I, I think it's right there on, on your desk. You know, you know, Al, I can't afford to lose jobs over a flat tire. This is a towing company, man. You know, get my truck back on the road. Morning, Kenny. Yeah, Martin, what's going on? How are you doing? All right, have a Thanks. Listen, I have good news. Yeah, well, I could use some. Oh, well, how would you feel about going after a three-year towing contract with the state of Illinois? Oh, well, that, see, that, that's what I'm talking about, man. Now, what do I have to do? You have to give me a little bit of your time and patience. It's a little ambitious, and the application process is pretty extensive. One error, we're disqualified. Oh, the deadline is in a few days, so you're not going to have to work around the whole... Go ahead. Shall we tell him? Kenny. Uh -huh. The police just asked Lim to come down for questioning. I was wondering if you could go and see about him. Terry's already on her way there. You know, hey, baby, baby, I'm in the middle of a meeting right now, and if Terry's there, she can handle it. I mean, there's nothing I can do that she can't, right? I guess so, but... So, you know, I, I'm in the middle of this meeting, baby. I will have to call you back later. Okay. All right. Hey, this this is good. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, Mr. Van Adams. Detective. Mr. Van Adams' attorney. You shouldn't have brought him down here without contacting me first. Well, you're here now. Please have a seat and safe day. I see you still have to work on those matters, Detective. I told Bird not to bother you. Well, you shouldn't be here by yourself. I just want to tell him what I know so I can get out of here. I got a lot of work to do. I'm supposed to meet an insurance company about a loss estimate. May we begin? Of course. Now, first things first. Keisha kisses and hugs me extra long when I let her beat me at death retreat. Basically, she's perfect. So, what are you going to wear to the fight? Okay. She's as perfect as a girl can be. What am I gonna wear? 
It's not a fashion show. Sorry. I just meant maybe you should wear something with a lot of cushion so that when you fall, you don't... Why do you think I'm going to fall? I, I don't. Then why'd you say it? Why are you getting mad at me? Because Brands is going to beat me down and suddenly you're the fashion police. I'm not mad at you. I'm sorry. I'm probably just tired. What time did you leave that night? Uh, a little after 10. Anyone else in the store when you left? Just them. If he was no longer an employee, why'd you leave him in the store by himself? He wanted to lock up one last time. So as the new manager, you think it's smart to allow an ex-employee unrestricted access to the store? <laughs> Lem's not really an ex-employee. Does he still work at j &H? No. Then he's an ex-employee. I guess I still just thought of him as my boss. So when he said I could go home, I, I just left. You just left. Ms. Van Adam? Yes? Could I speak to you? About? Your husband's whereabouts tonight at the fire. Yeah, sure. Come in. Thanks. Coffee? Uh, no, thanks. Good. Sit. Thank you. Lem was here with me that night. What else do you want to know? Well, we've learned from an employee that uh, your husband quit his job at the store after a dispute with your sister. Which is my family's business. <sighs> Mrs. Van Adams, we're really just trying to get to the bottom of this. No, you're not. You're trying to pin this on them. Now, he got home at 11. We had dinner. I went to bed. He watched TV at home. Then he went to bed. How do you know he didn't go out again after you went to bed? I just told you. You know what? I'm done. I'm not. Well, then call my attorney. Oh, yes, Terry Joseph, the lawyer who doesn't appreciate my bedside manner. That's her. Goodbye. When did you develop an interest in boxing? Normally, I wouldn't have told my dad about the fight, but he can't keep anything from my mom, and there's no way she let me go through with it. Um, there's this kid, Brandon, that was disrespecting Keisha right in front of me, so I'm jacking him up. Oh, this is just wrong, Arban. No, I don't like it at all. Yes, here comes the lecture. I see. You're, uh, you're right-handed, right? All right, turn around here. You want to keep your right hand back and your left hand in front to block, right? Yeah. Keep your right foot back. Yeah, see, that way you have power when you swing. Yeah? Like that, right? Um, so you're not mad about me fighting? Oh, well, standing up for yourself is all a, a part of growing up, am I? Now, I don't condone fighting, but if there's somebody out there who's bullying you, well, you have to learn how to defend yourself. Now, come on, let me see that swing. Yeah, think power. Power. You, you can do better than that, I know. All right? Yeah. Hey, okay. okay, I'm back. Hey. Hey, babe. Hi, <laughs> Ma. Hi. Yeah. <clears throat> Talk to Lynn. It seems more worried about the cost of fixing the store than anything else. Well, like you said, Terry can handle it. Mr. Van Adams. Yeah, 
I know. I love the ribs here, too. <laughs> As you can see, my lawyer isn't with me. So don't ask me any damn questions. Hey, don't have any questions. Just answers. Let's see. Mr. Lester's in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, so he definitely did not start the fire. The Joseph sisters have no motive for burning down the store. Neither does the new manager. Who's looking forward to a new job before she left me there to burn it. Oh, I mean lock it up. Oh, fuck you. So that only leaves you. The ex-con and disgruntled employee who... Oh, I just found out torched his bed when he was 12. See? Don't have any questions. Just answer. Can I talk to you? Sure. Come on in. What did you tell the cops? Nothing. You had to tell them something, Sarah, because they've been all over me since they talked to you. You told me to run the store the same way I would if you were still there. I shouldn't have let you lock up. I have been locking up that store every night for months. You must have made it seem like it was something unusual about that. I don't know what you're talking about. I just told the truth. You can't expect me to cover for you. What? You think I burnt that store down? It doesn't matter what I think, it... okay? It does matter. Because whatever you think is what you told the police. And whatever you told them is making them fuck with me. It's not my fault, Lem. I just got off the cell with Lem, and he told me that the insurance company refuses to speak to him any further until the police investigation is completed. I know. He starts Groove Theory tonight. Oh, yeah. I told him that we might be there if we get a babysitter this late, but uh, I'm so tired I can barely remember my own name. Hmm. Why so busy? Well, I'm trying to get this state contract completed that Martin hit me to. And trust me, it is no joke. Hmm. Well, that sounds great. How come you never mentioned it? No, I'm sorry, baby. I guess it just slipped my mind. You know, the deadline is a couple days away, and I was going to come down to the wire. I know you're working hard, Kenny, mm -hmm. but don't forget your family needs you, too. My family needs me to take care of them, and that's what I'm trying to do, baby. All I'm saying is that you need to find a balance. Time for your brother-in-law. Time for your kids. Your daughters are starting to forget what you look like. You know, baby, sometimes I feel like I can't win. You know, if I work too hard, I'm not a good father. If I stay at home and without a job, then I'm not a good provider. So I'm not quite sure where to find this balance that you're talking about. Are you worried? About the store? Yes. About this investigation? No. We both know where I was, and that's all that matters. Well, maybe you should call Jack. I already did. He said Connor's an asshole from way back. He's gonna find out more about this case and get back to me. Good. Now, have you seen my chain? <laughs> you know the whole family's got your back, right? I know. I kind of expected Kenny to be there a little more, but... I know he's working overtime on that proposal. Yeah, well, it's a crazy time for everybody. Now, all you need is a good-looking woman on your arm when you make your grand entrance. Hmm, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. You know any? Mm, not funny. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> Thank you. 
up, everybody? Now, a lot of you already know me, but for those who don't, my name is Lem Van Adams. I'm the new night manager here. So if there's anything that we can do to make your group theory experience better, I'm the man you want to see. Thank you. Now, before they kick me off this mic, I want to give a special shout out to my wife, my beautiful wife, Bird. I love you, baby. All right, now we're going to get back to some music, and I want to see everybody on this dance floor. All right? Have a good time. I just started this job. I mean, do we need to do this? You're under arrest for arson. What? What are you doing? He didn't do anything. You have the right no. to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used to Just call Terry. Law. Tell him what happened. You have a right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, one will be appointed to you. Go call Dave. I didn't know anyone was in here. Yeah, I'm squatting till my office is ready. Yeah, I see. Well, I have to run. I have a family emergency. Oh, and by the way, welcome. I saw the memo this morning about you joining us. I just haven't had time to come by. Thank you. So, what's the crisis? Excuse me? You, you mentioned something about a, an emergency? My brother-in-law was arrested on an arson charge, and I've been trying to get him out so he doesn't have to spend the whole weekend in jail. I see. Maybe I can help. <laughs> that would be amazing. Do you know someone I can get a hold of that can speed this thing up? I know the perfect person. Me. I can't ask you to do that. I don't have any cases yet. This might as well be my first. Yeah, it's Bob. Hey! Psst. Hey! Hey, man! Hey! Do you have any robbers on you? I need to borrow one. What? The fuck? what? Yeah. Robbers, man. I need to borrow one. Damn. You. Get nah, man. I can't help you. Sorry, man. That's not allowed. It's okay. It's all right, bro. I thought everybody forgot about me. No. We wanted to get you out. I could have called a lot of other people last night. Brothers I know who wouldn't have left me sitting in here. Are you crazy? Sitting in jail talking about using some street connection? This is Bob Wayne. He's a new member of our firm and a really great criminal attorney, and he's agreed to represent you. Well, if he's so good, why am I still sitting in a cell? Listen to me, Lim. Terry and I did our best. There's a fair amount of red tape involved, and you couldn't get processed out in the time that we had. That's it. I am not guilty. Well, I don't need to hear what you know. I need to hear what they know. Which means you answer only the questions that I ask you, and you don't volunteer anything. Where did y'all find this fucking clown? Lim, we are not in a position to second-guess this man. Now, do you want to get out of here or not? Please. Fine. 
The first thing you need to do is get in contact with my cousin Jack. He's a detective. Your in the wife already suggested that. Now I checked into it a little early this morning. Found there's no such person who works for the Chicago PD. I searched a little deeper and found that there's a Jack Van Adams who was fired about six months ago. Now the department has a, a warrant out on him, a felony warrant for impersonating a police officer. A dozen other offenses that some of them are quite sick. Nobody in the family wanted to talk much about what was going on with Uncle Lim. My mom told me he was in jail, but it was a mistake. As usual, she didn't give me any details. I wonder if she'll ever think I'm old enough to handle the truth. I was thinking, maybe you shouldn't fight Brandon. Why? I don't know. Fighting's stupid. Um, well, if that's how you want it, but I was ready to be Brandon's buff for you. I know you were. It's just that I don't want my boyfriend throwing down on the street like he has no home training. Did you get that from my mom? Yeah. Kiss, please. Okay. I'm not sure, but I could swear I felt Keisha slip me a little tongue that time. Maybe there's something to this nonviolent stuff after all. Now, this is amazing. If I get this contract, I'm more than double my profits in the first year alone. Yeah, listen, you better be ready for that kind of growth. A lot of small businesses can't handle it. Help has arrived. Hi, Martin. Nice to see you. Oh, hey, what, um, what, what is all this? Well, you said you were swamped, so I thought I'd swing by and lend you a hand and bring you some lunch. Uh, oh. Chad Wei Tillman, Maxine speaking. Yeah, okay. Hold on, hold on, please. A stall on 27th and Michigan. Mercedes. Okay, thank you. Maxine, as long as you're here, you have any idea where I'd find this year's quarterly tax returns? Oh, Lila and I reorganized everything. No. Right here. If you need anything else, just ask. Thanks, I will. Well, uh, someone will be there shortly, and thank you for calling. All right. Um, Martin, excuse me for a second, all right? Yeah. You know, baby, I'm glad you're here. And I, I really needed your help. I, I just didn't know how to ask for it. Well, after I said all that your family needs you stuff, I realized you need your family, too. Stop spinning like that, or you're gonna make yourself sick. Okay. All right. Yeah. I got it. I got it. Chad, wait, telling. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure I can find those copies. Hold on, please. Jenny. You can't go to the zoo with me. Why not? Cause they're not your friends. They're my friends. Yeah. Here, give you. Bob. <laughs> Amanda. Bob, I Morning. haven't seen you since you, I don't know, since you jumped ship. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> listen, I understand you're working on the Lim Van Adams case. Yeah. And I wanted to talk to you about that. <laughs> okay. But unless your client's ready to confess, this is going to be a very short conversation. Well, listen, you're asking for $500,000 bail? Yeah. I mean, isn't that a little excessive? Look. His father serving in Lansing. His mother has been in and out of jail in three states. Her client was born to be a criminal. Oh, and he's also done a little time of his own. Yeah, but he's turned his life around. <laughs> okay, now that should count for something. Sure he has. He's, he's turned from running drugs to torching businesses. That's an impressive career change. Amanda, I'm asking you to work with me. It's not going to happen, Bob. I have motive, I have opportunity, and I have a defendant who just happened to change the store's insurance coverage three months before the fire. I know that. I also know that Lem turned a run-of-the-mill grocery store into a thriving business with no formal training. Mm -hmm. He cares about that store. Yeah. Well, I guess you'll just have to convince the judge of that. And I look forward to it. Stepping back into the shadow, standing on the sidewalk, live with chalk. Brothers in the hood, 
Should be watching they back before they get trapped. Do you want shrimp? I came to make you a deal. Leave my women alone from now on, and we don't have to fight. Whoa, hold up. Hold up. You're not backing out on me, are you? Because I will catch you if you run. Same way the cops keep catching your criminal last uncle. No way am I gonna just stand here and let him dog my uncle in. You better watch what you say about my uncle. All right, all right. I'm sorry for talking about Uncle Jailbird. Tuesday, 3 o'clock. You better not be late. I can't believe they set bail at half a million dollars. It's more Mary. than the store is worth. The mayor hearing's not until next week. Lem well, cannot sit in jail for a week. I'll see what I can do. Can he chat, wait? Maybe we can put up the house. Hey, Maxine, awesome. it is time we stop thinking of this house as a pile of money that we can just dip into every time there's a sudden need. Besides, we couldn't put up this house even if we wanted to. No bail bondsman will accept it as collateral as long as there's still a lien on it. Oh. What do you think, Henry? No, one second, babe. Last year, financials. I thought I sent you a copy. Okay, well, I'll check my bag right here. Yeah. I'm just gonna have to put up my shop. Well, your shop and this house combined still wouldn't be enough. Well, then I'll find a way to come up with the rest, Terry. Now, stop acting like this is one of your everyday cases. This is my husband we're talking about here. She didn't mean it like that. Oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'll get this over to you first thing in the morning, all right? all right? Kenny, will you please? Well, why not? Oh, okay. All right. Later. Sorry about that. Well, I got to get on the road here. Where are you going? Work. Our application needs to be postmarked by midnight tonight, and this needs to be a part of the package. Well, Kenny, we're in the middle of something. Yeah, I know, but I really need to. Well, then fine, go. Lem is in trouble. You don't even give a shit. Oh, wait a minute, Bert. I have a business to run. So do I. But Lem is in trouble, and I need to figure out how to get him out of it. Oh, but don't, don't stay. Please go, because it's certainly not your problem. It's mine. I do not have time to get into this right now. Now, do what I can in order to help Lem. You know that. Great. I just, I need to get going right now because I have to do... Just go, honey. Just go. It's all right. Just go. Shit. Bird. Are you sure you want to put Lim on the witness stand? Yeah, I, I know it's risky, but it's a good way to poke a hole in the, in the prosecutor's portrayal of him. I mean, the judge needs to see that he's not some career criminal. The same judge who handed down that ridiculous half million dollar bail? See, our best bet is to keep Lim off the stand. We'll push for a dismissal. Terry, I know we have different approaches, but I need you to trust me. Now, I've been doing this for nine years. I think I know what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. You know... You took this case so fast, I haven't had a chance to say thanks. It's not necessary. I've always enjoyed a good challenge, and you have certainly provided me with one. I have a confession to make. Hmm? I was furious when I found out you were joining the firm. Yeah, I kind of figured that out. Yeah, I guess I do have trouble hiding my feelings. My mother used to tell me that everything showed on my face. And I'm going to have to agree with your mother. So, why'd you leave the prosecutor's office? I was starting to feel burned out and feeling like I needed a change. Uh, wondering whether or not I was making a difference. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and then the riots happened. I was ordered to prosecute every individual that the Chicago PD could round up. But it seemed that too many of the people were innocent. And too many of them looked like me. So that's when I figured I couldn't do it anymore. I know how you feel. I've never worked for the government, but I know what it feels like to work too hard for a little reward. And to know you're not doing enough for the people who really need you. Exactly. 
Which is why I'm starting a mentoring program here. And now that I know that you're a big old softie, I'll be knocking on your oh, door. Oh, my door is always open. I marked there some policies. Pop, pop, it's being heard from around the block. Stepping back into the shadow, standing on the sidewalk. Line with chalk, brothers in the hood. Should be watching their back before they get jacked. You be lying and dying if you don't be doing that. The deep end, you ready? Yeah, you see how ready I am when I break your nose? Like my dad said. Sometimes a man has to stand up for himself. Ahmad, what are you doing? What does it look like? I told you fighting was stupid. I don't want you fighting over me. I'm not. You're not? Now that clown talked about my uncle. Nobody talks about my family. Now move. Ahmad, move. that for? Because I'm proud of you. thought you said you didn't want me to fight. I said fighting was stupid. I didn't say you shouldn't fight. <sighs> but you fought for a smart reason, and I don't mind that. I'm not gonna even try to follow that logic. Cool. You want another kiss? Okay. If Keish is kissing me like this, I must be getting closer to a feel. Big Bird. Good morning, Kenny. What are you doing here? Well, I finished my project. Met the deadline. Thought you might need me to take you to, to court this morning. Well, that's all right. Max is going to drive me. Look, now let me do this. Please? Are you sure you have the time? I am making the time, Big Bird. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> No proof of any kind. Just wild speculation and coincidence. Yes, Len Van Adams was at the store on the night of the fire. He freely admitted that under sworn testimony. But as manager, it was his job to be there. The store was practically his second home. Now, despite some indiscretions in his youth, or perhaps because of them, my client is now a model citizen. He even risked his own life to defend the store during the riots. There's no probable cause here, Your Honor. We move for immediate dismissal. If the uh, Joseph family was so proud of the defendant, why did they present him with an employment contract that stripped him of his authority over the store? Objection, Your Honor. The contract was never executed. Overruled. Continue, Ms. Walker. He's right. It wasn't. In fact, that contract angered the defendant so much that he quit rather than go along with it. So there's your motive. Revenge. He also quietly doubled the store's insurance coverage three months before the fire. Now, he stands to collect uh, one-third of the insurance money that his wife, as co-owner, would be awarded. His fingerprints were all over the lighter fluid bottle. He has a history of childhood arson. What further evidence do we need to take this case to trial? Yeah, hey, I've heard enough. Based on the evidence presented, I find that probable cause does indeed exist. Bail stands at five hundred thousand dollars, and the defendant is hereby bound over for trial. We're adjourned. Five hundred thousand dollars. It's going to be okay. Do something. Do something. Do something. Let's go. Lamb! No, how is it going to be okay? We're not going to be able to get him out.